All right, might as well get this out of the way first, rip this band-aid off. Turns out, Denjiro is actually Kyoshiro. Whoa, I know, I know, a lot of you are freaking out right now, like, teching, you, you can't just open the video up with that kind of earth-shattering news. I wasn't ready! You know, next thing you'll tell me is this sexy lady turned out to be Alvita this whole time, or that Sage King was actually Usopp. Well, okay, that last one is still up for debate, but... Sorry to tell you that Kyoshiro is in fact Injiro, and this woman is in fact Alvita. So I'll, I'll give you a second to recover from that kind of blowback. Are you good? All right. Okay. So here's the deal. Um, Kyoshiro is Denjiro. You know, if you saw the last chapter of One Piece, you know that. Or if you watched the opening of One Piece, like I don't know, four or five months ago, I guess you would also know that because there he is right there. Um, we talked about that in the review, but let's talk about exactly what this means in the story. I did do a video on Kyoshiro a couple months ago, and, you know, even before the opening of One Piece, you know, even before Over the Top, you know, had that image right there with Ashura Doji and Kyoshiro, we could connect the pieces together, there were a lot of people that already figured that he was going to turn out to be either, you know, Witching Hour Boy or Denjiro or both, simply because it's like, alright, you have this, uh, you have the Nine Red Scabbards, right? They're all going to be very important characters in the Wano arc, you know, we get introduced to Kinemon and Kanjiro and Raizo, eventually Kawamatsu and Ashura Doji, so you figure Denjiro Jiro is also going to be important as well. Well, he's not showing up anywhere in the Wano arc. You know, even Kinemon says when they're planning for the raid on Onigashima, they're like, we looked all over the country, we haven't heard anything about Denjiro, we don't know what happened to him, and so either the only logical explanations that I could come up with are either, okay, either Denjiro is just dead, which... I mean, like, I think you could have made that work from a storytelling perspective. I really think you could have. You could have had, like, a story involving Denjiro, like, you know, it's been 20 years. I mean, something like that would have possibly happened in that big gap of time there. You know, you could have had Ashura Doji be really mad at Kinemon. I mean, Ashura Doji was already really mad at Kinemon, but he could have, like, shook him and, like, you don't understand, Kinemon. Denjiro died waiting for you people to show up. You know, I, I think that would have worked, and they could have uh, brought somebody else on as, like, a, a placeholder for the scabbards, you know? Um, the second option is Denjiro is still alive, but he was not in the country. This kind of ties back to uh, the Shimosuke village in the east, connecting back to Koshiro, who is Zoro's master. Um, there is still going to be a big connection with that involving Wano. Um, I made a video about Denjiro talking about the possibility that Koshiro and Denjiro might be, in fact, brothers, because they did, you know, before Denjiro's appearance changed, you know, and he's now Kyoshiro, he did resemble Koshiro a little bit bit, you know, just with the black hair, ponytail, Denjiro wore the sunglasses, Koshiro wears glasses, um, you know, uh, Koshiro's father is most likely Kozaburo Shimosuke, and uh, there's a connection with the East Blue and Wano, a ship arriving there, you know, decades ago, like 50-something years ago, so there might, that, that might still be a possibility, we might still find out a connection between Koshiro and Denjiro just there alone, um, but that was also a possibility, and the third possibility, what turned out to be true, is that Denjiro is still in Wano, he's still alive, Alive. It's just that he's a character that it's going by a different name, much like how Ashura Doji went by the name of Shuten Maru. However, even though you know Ashura Doji changed his name, he didn't really change his appearance at all. He still looks pretty much the same as he did 20 years ago, which makes me wonder why Kaido or Orochi or anybody didn't connect the dots there. Like, hey, there's this uh, mountain bandit in the Curry region that's raising hell in the Bakura town and everything like that. He's like, ah, oh, really? What does he look like? Well, he's this giant fat guy that rides around on a cow, and he's got pink hair shaped like a cherry blossom tree. Hmm, that sounds a lot like that large man with uh, pink hair and a cherry blossom tree hairstyle, you know, back during Odin's time. He was one of his scabbards. What was his name? Uh, Shuten Maru. Oh, alright, well that other guy was Ashura Doji. Probably no connection whatsoever. <laughs> he made no effort to change his appearance. But when it came to Denjiro, though, I'm like, alright, alright, he did change his appearance. It wasn't voluntarily, it was like because of the rage that he felt for Orochi and Kaido at the death of Odin and the way that the family was treated, his face literally contorted and like... <laughs> Yeah, that, that, cause that's, that happens. Hey man, you know, you remember being a little kid and your mom always told you, you know, don't make faces cause your face will get stuck like that. I remember one time I was in a Ripley's Believe It or Not, you know, kind of like attraction museum kind of place once. I think it was like in Ocean City, Maryland, cause we made a few trips there when I was younger. And, uh, I remember seeing a picture of a guy whose face was like, his, like, lower lip was like, 
And he was like that, and his face was permanently stuck like that. And the caption next to that image was like, you know, always listen when your parents tell you not to make a face, because this could happen to you. And me, being a dumbass little kid, I'm like, okay, I'll listen. You know, so, yeah. Any anyway, <laughs> I don't know, because that actually happened. Are there anybody, like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm like 26, almost 27 years old. You think I would know about this at this point. But if every day, if you made a conscious effort to be like, <clears throat> would your face eventually stay permanently stuck like that? So he ended up out in the middle of the woods, in the middle of the Hakumai region, and he basically just spent an undetermined amount of time in this temple, in this shrine, in the middle of nowhere, just yelling and crying in rage, you know, probably breaking every object he could find, and his face eventually contorted so his eyes were super narrow, his face like elongated, uh, he stopped wearing his shades, his ponytail, well he, okay, here's the funny thing about Kyoshiro, alright? He still has the ponytail Denjiro wore, but he takes his ponytail and he flops it over his head. It looks like it's a pompadour, but it's not. If you actually look at it, no, it's his ponytail he just flipped over his head. That's hilarious. That's great. But his hair also turns, well, when we see him in the manga when he steps out of the temple as like a ragged old mountain man, it looks just pure white, but then in the anime it looks like a pale blue, so maybe he dyed it at some point. I, I don't know. So, uh, we don't know how long he spent in the temple. Uh, when he's in the temple, when he min when he immediately gets there after the battle's over, uh, you know, it's seemed like spring or summer, and then Oda just cuts to winter all of a sudden. Now, also keep in mind, the weather patterns at Wano tend to change quite a bit, and that's already been established, alright? The weather patterns are rather un- un-, un um, uh, you know, unstable. That's a word I was looking for. They're rather unstable. But I think more than anything, Oda was trying to show us, like, no, he didn't just spend a week or a month in this temple. He spent a long time in this temple so I'm gonna say you know probably like like six seven eight months a minimum you know like a handful of months like easily over a half a year or even years themselves you know he could have spent years in this temple in this shrine living as a mountain man living off the you know the the uh, the game and the vegetation and just uh just hating himself you know just like you know hating himself for not being there not doing more hating Orochi hating Kaido just hating pretty much everything and just crying and just eventually his face changed to that eventually he emerges from the shrine one day and he just wanders into the flower capital. I'm not really sure if this is because he had a reason for it um, or if he was just like I'm just gonna, maybe he he reached the end of his, uh, you know, his tolerance for life, you know, and he's just like, it's over, I'm done. And he just like walks out into the snow and he ends up in the flower capital. Or you could say he did have a legitimate reason because this all of this seemed to work really well in his favor. He walks into the flower capital, gets accosted by two random people. It's like, hey, old man, what are you doing in the flower capital? He grabs them like, pff, don't smacks him into the ground like that. They immediately get back up and they're like, whoa, you're strong, old dude. What's your name? We'll follow you as your underlings. And he, you know, just, he just turns and he immediately says, I'm Kyoshiro. And like, all right, boss Kyoshiro, we're doing this. In the Viz translation, he was Kyoshiro the Mad, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so the kanji, it makes sense in that regard, but also in the sense of, like, you're mad, like, you're crazy mad, like, you're kind of a lunatic, but also mad as in, like, he's actually mad. He's actually angry at Kaido and Orochi so much that his face contorted, right? So it's like a double meaning there. But yeah, the kanji. Uh, the kyo part is just crazy, lunatic, insane. She stands for death. And then the ro part uh, is the counter for sons. Like, you're the sun, you're the counter for the sons in, in Japanese, okay? Um, you're the uh, a number of sons, okay? So, yeah, he's the son of death and, you know, madness, maybe is one translation you could look at there. I think that fits the name that he came up with himself, because that's basically what he's been living for as long as he's been out in the woods, okay? So, this is what I mean by, like, he kind of had a plan, because he already seemed to come up with the name, and, I mean, a lot of this stuff just works so well, where it's like, I'm gonna beat some people up until people follow me. Like, does that logic seem to make sense to you at all? Like, I'm just gonna wander into the flower capital, anybody that accosts me, I'm just gonna beat the shit out of them, and then they're obviously gonna get back up and follow me, and then I'm gonna become the new mafia boss. 
So I don't know if this was all of Kyoshiro's plan or if he just had a, like a general idea of what he was going to do. And like the universe worked perfectly in his favor. You know, he's like, he, he's like, all right. He's in his he's in his mountain shrine. He's like eating up like a rabbit he just caught earlier that day, and he's like, mm. "All right, here's the plan. I'm gonna wander into the flower capital, become a mafia boss somehow, get a position next to Orochi, earn his trust, become his number one servant, and then I'm just gonna." And so maybe he is like, "All right, it's gonna be really really hard for me to get to that." I'm gonna go into the flower capital today, get stock of the situation and all that. Boop! Oh, follow me, sir! All right, well, that was easy. All right, cool, we're making a mafia. All right, wow, that worked out so well. So, some other stuff happens. There's a little bit of a skip there. We don't know exactly how he gathered all that power. I guess just, you know, that, that's how it works in the flower capital. Really strong, you know, traveler, drifter, old man just wandering through town. He's like, a bunch of people are following him. Yeah, he, okay, I don't have next, uh, you know, one day he's just this old man, next day he's a freaking Yakuza boss, all right. So, eventually Orochi notices his, you know, r prestige in town, and he's like, I hear you're Kyoshiro, I hear you want to protect me. It was clearly Kyoshiro's idea that he wanted to do that, and he bows before Orochi, and he's like, yes, Lord Orochi, I'll listen to you. And he's like, mm, yep. I'll give you money and weapons and women and all the stuff you need in the world, right? So, Kyoshiro Denjiro is actually really smart here. He's actually playing the long game, all right? He, he's really intelligent with how he's doing this. He's like, you know, Ashura Doji, he's still rebelling. He's still out in the mountains of Curry, not obeying Orochi or Kaido, still kind of doing his own thing in the lawless land, picking up where he left off before he met Odin. Uh, Kawamatsu has to protect Hiyori. That's his job, and eventually Hiyori gets separated from him. He tries to gather weapons at Ringo, and he ends up getting thrown in the prison at Udon, okay? All the other members of the Scabbards, they ended up going to the future. Neku and Inu were at Zo you know, protecting their own country. Denjiro, he doesn't have anybody he has to look after, so he's kind of free to do whatever he wants. I mean, Ashura Doji could have as well, but he, he chose to do the mountain bandit life. Denjiro decided, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to earn Orochi's trust as much as I would hate it, as much as I would despise every second that I would be under that idiot's, you know, command where I would be his, his right-hand man and do whatever he says, whatever his beckoning call was. If he tells me to go and just slaughter a family because they didn't pay their debts, I'm going to do that because I'm the head of the Yakuza. If that's what he tells me to do, I'm going to do. I would hate it, but the reward, the payoff, the eventual payoff for that would mean I get to be by Orochi's side whenever I want and any time I want, I could end his existence and I could free this country. That's what I'm going to do. So you got to give it to Denjiro. Despite the fact he had so much rage for Orochi, his face changed. He still sucked all that up. And he dealt with being the boss of the Kyoshiro family, the head of the Yakuza. And Orochi's like one of his right-hand men for, um, I don't want to say 20 years exactly, because he probably spent a few years in the mountain temple as a, a crazy uh, her hermit. And uh, eventually another, probably a few other years to build up enough power in order to get Orochi's attention, but quite a large amount of, quite a long amount of time passed where he was the head of the Yakuza and he, you know, Orochi trusted him, okay? Um, now, a few things here. Uh, number one, you'd figure like, okay, he's been Orochi's right-hand man for so long, why didn't he make a move before then? You know, uh, like 15 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago. He was Orochi's right-hand man probably all of those years. Why didn't he try to take him out then? Well, I'm sure there's like two reasons. Number one, it seemed like from his conversation with Hiyori, Denjiro definitely believed Toki's prophecy. Ashura Doji was kind of dubious. There were a lot of people that were really dubious because it's like, you know, time travel. This is Wano we're talking about here where, you know, magic and things are kind of like, even devil fruits are kind of unknown. I mean, they have devil fruits, but they don't really know how about the whole process of how they work. So telling people that, you know, oh yeah, your saviors are gone, but they're going to reappear in 20 years and change the country. I mean, 20 years is a long ass time to wait. So it's going to be a, it's going to take a lot of faith for that, right? So Ashura Doji was even kind of dubious. Kawamatsu believed in Toki and Denjiro believed in Toki. So he's like, I'm going to wait until they show up. I believe that's going to happen. I'm not going to make a move until then. Because when they finally do show back up with, you know, Prince Momo and Kanemon and everybody there, they're going to need a man on the inside. 
and I'm going to be their man on the inside. But he's also very, very cautious, okay? He's not going to be the kind of guy, like, as soon as he hears Kanemon and everybody's back in the capital, uh, the murmurings that the Kozuki clan's going to turn back, you know, Kyoshiro is not just going to throw down his sword and be like, yay, they're back! Screw you, Orochi! No, he's like, okay, all right, good. They're back. It's happening. The rebellion's happening. But I still need to stay close to Orochi. I still need to prove to him that I'm trustworthy because the second the Kozuki clan rebellion's happening and then the, I, I, I leave or I start acting suspicious, you know, Orochi is so damn paranoid, he's going to suspect everybody. So I got to prove to him that I'm on his side no matter what. No matter what that means, I got to prove that, okay? So that's why he didn't make a move there. Eventually, after Hiori gets separated from Kawamatsu, this would have been uh, seven years after Odin's death, uh, so 13 years ago, he finds Hiori in the streets and, you know, takes her on, like, I will protect you, I will guard you in place of Kawamatsu, you will become, you will train to be an Oiran under the name Komura Saki, um, just do not tell anybody about who I am or who you are. All right, that was his one rule. He's just like, because this is going to be really important one day. Um, I got to make sure that no one knows. Even, even if you see people that like have the Kozuki crest on their ankles that are still loyal to our cause, you can't tell them. All right. Even after they come back from the future, you can't tell them. All right. And so Hyori, you know, she does. Well, Okay, she does explain to uh, Zoro who she is, but who knows? Maybe maybe Kyoshiro explained that that was all right to tell them, like, at that point. Like, all right, you can tell that person because he's trustworthy, he's straw hats, I don't know. Um, you know, but she, Yori does tell her identity to Zoro, so yeah. Um, Kyoshiro at the execution of Yasuie, he appears to protect Orochi. You know, Zoro goes to attack Orochi and Kyoshiro blocks the attack, showing that his uh, skills at the sword have not dulled. If nothing, they've probably gotten stronger, just like Ashura Doji has gotten stronger over the 20-year gap there. You know, a couple of years living out as a mountain bandit, not mountain bandit, but just like a mountain hobo. You know, probably dulled it a little bit, but he's been ahead of the Yakuza for a long time. He's really trained with it, so um, he's good to go in that regard there. Uh, but now you wonder, where is he going to strike? He's going to pick the exact perfect moment to strike, and it's going to be beautiful, all right? Kyoshiro is probably going to be part of the uh, the procession, I would assume, for uh, Orochi. Like, he's going to be going to Onigashima. I, I would assume that's going to be part of it, because uh, Onigashima is where all the action is going to happen, so he would be part of that there. Um, and it's like... It's like up there at the fire festival. It's like Kaido and Orochi are drinking sake. Kyoshiro might be up there too. He might be up there right behind Orochi, like, you know, as his loyal retainer or whatever. And then when the time comes, you know, I, I don't know if Kyoshiro is going to be the one to get the death blow on Orochi. Like, you know, like I've said this before, there are so many people that could get the death blow on Orochi and it would make sense. It could be Hiori or Momo because they, he killed uh, their dad. It could be Kinemon or any other scabbards, uh, Kyoshiro included. Um, but, you know, he has the opportunity to. I mean, like, let's just be straight up. Like, a, a Kyoshiro, anytime he wanted to, he could have ran Orochi through with his sword. Like, seriously. Like, he had, like, thousands of opportunities to do that. Um, there's definitely a reason he didn't. I mean, for one thing, even if he slayed Orochi, Kaido's kind of the main problem here, right? I mean, that's that he's the main issue. I think everybody realizes, like, even if you were to slay Orochi, Kaido could just go all dragon and then just enact a tyrannical rule over the country that might even be worse than Orochi did, um, you know, Orochi was trying to basically just run the country into the ground. He had no interest in the country in terms of like like it prospering or continuing the Kurozumi line. He just wanted to ruin the country for the sake of ruining it because they ruined his life. Um, Kaido would uh, basically, like if Orochi died and Kaido had to take over as the supreme ruler, uh, he would probably just turn it into like a, a straight up like slave camp like the entire nation, and he would just turn it like that, and he would still live on Onigashima, and he would just turn the entire country, the flower capital, everything into a massive weapons factory, and he just wouldn't care, and if anybody talked out of turn, he would just burn their house down with his dragon powers, like, that's, that's how a Kaido rule over Wano would basically be. They have to take care of Kaido, Kyoshiro is strong, but he's not strong enough to take on Kaido by himself, so he's like, alright, we're gonna wait for that until for them to arrive, and then the plan's gonna enact. Um, the problem here is, how exactly is Kyoshiro going to pass on the message to the rebellion of who he is and what his plan is? 
because he's not the kind of guy, he's not really in the position to write a note or anything like that. I mean, I guess he could, but, you know, it might get intercepted. So that's, I think, where Hiori comes into play there, where Hiori's death or Komurasaki's death is faked, and then that gives her free reign to wander around because no one's expecting her because she's apparently dead, and then she can pass on the message to maybe members of the, um, whenever Kiyoshiro feels like the time is right, and be like, right before the flower, uh, the fire festival, he's like, okay, Hiori, pass on the message to them now. Um, in fact, Orochi had a plan to, you know, squ you know, squ uh, squash the rebellion at the Udon port, which when the, you know, scabbards show up, it's abandoned. Uh, Kyoshiro might have known of his plan. Kyoshiro might have been the person that Orochi sent. Like, Orochi's like, ah, Kyoshiro, I discovered they moved the rebellion. They're not going to be doing it at Habu port. They're going to be doing it at Tokage port. Repa report there at once and end their existence. Yeah. And Kyoshiro is like, yes, sir, I will. So what if Kyoshiro led his mafia to the uh, Tokage port and they made it look like there was a battle that took place. Like, they threw some barrels around, they wrecked some boats. They, they made it look like a battle happened there. And, um, in the meantime, when he met the Rebellion, he, you know, met, Kine you know, he not Kanemon yet, but he met the Rebellion, and he's like, don't worry, you can trust me. I am, in fact, I am Denjiro. And if Hyori was there to vouch for him, and be like, oh no, he's, he's being legit, he's really a good guy, and be like, all right, Orochi found out that you guys were meeting at this port because, you know, you were still passing around a note everywhere that basically, you know, all you did was add some lines to the snake. People figured out that it was Tokage port pretty quickly. So here's the deal. Uh, we're going to make it look like a battle happened here. So Orochi thinks that he won. And then we're going to move the rebellion over here because I'm, I work for Orochi. I know his plan. I know everything he's going to do here. So work with me here. And then we'll meet over this way, and then we'll join up with the scabbards, and then we'll raid Onigashima from this angle, from a different direction, and then then I know exactly where to go and where Orochi's going to be in the manor and with Kaido and everything like that. That makes a lot more sense to me now that Kyoshiro is a man on the inside, and that he would want to make damn sure, even after the rebellion arrived, that he was still on Orochi's side until the very last minute, until like 11.59, on, and it's like, alright, this is it. I will now announce that I am in fact... Oh, actually, he could still be a double agent. He could. He could have helped out the Rebellion and been like, Alright, you guys do this and this. Move over there. Invade Onigashima from that angle. I have to meet... I have to be at the procession. I have to be at the fire Festival. Because he still has to think that I'm on his side. And then Kyoshiro goes over there. Gets to Onigashima. They're all drinking sake. Having a fun time. Thinking the Rebellion's, you know, done. And, you know, Kyoshiro's like, Ah, oh, yes! Hey, Orochi, I have something I want to say. Oh, Kyoshiro, one of my most loyal men. Men, Kyoshiro has an announcement to make. Everybody shut up. And Kyoshiro's like, ah, oh, thanks, Orochi, thanks, Orochi. <laughs> he walks He walks in front of everybody in a freaking hallway, and he just, he has his sword at his side, and he's like, ladies and gentlemen, it's nice to be here at this year's Kickin' Fire Festival! All the freaking beast pirates and, uh, you know, Orochi's, you know, samurai, they're all like, Whoa! Fire Festival 2020! Whoa! It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I have been your loyal Yakuza boss for decades, it seems now. I love all of you. All you guys are like my own family. And this guy right here... Shogun Kurozumi Orochi. Let's get a hand for this bastard. How about that? Yo, Orochi, yeah! And Kaido, man, you man mountain. Damn, you're awesome. Uh, anyway, he <laughs> just slices Orochi's head off. <laughs> oh, that's probably not how it's going to go down. But, oh my lord, that would be awesome. It's like, yeah, well, back to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man now now the only problem that he couldn't do it that way is like kaido would be like right there but maybe somebody like there would be just so much shock in the hallway like even kaido would be like eh? you know and then like freaking shinobu or raizo appears from the freaking rafters and like ninjas him out of the like smoke explosion boom and just like the entire banquet hall just covered and then kiyoshiro's like ha 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 i played y'all suck it and then he just like leaves <laughs> oh man i kind of want to see that now probably not how it's gonna go down though but he's the man on the inside he's got a plan he's probably the reason and, and plus also keep in mind the whole thing 
Oh, by the way, he was also Ushimitsu Kozo. He was also the Witching Hour Boy. At the end of the day, you really realize the Witching Hour Boy plotline didn't really go anywhere. You know, he was Robin Hood. Okay, so during the day, he was the Yakuza boss. During the night, he put on a handkerchief and stole money from the capital and gave it to the poor people of the leftover towns. That, that's good. That's a good thing to do. But, you know, beyond that, I mean, not much really else there. You know, he's he was the, he was the Wano version of Robin Hood, okay? And he was just living a double life. I'm like, okay. But if this is truly the end of the flashback, and this is the thing we find out, like the very, very last thing we find out in the flashback, if it's truly over. I know it's, I say it's going to be over all the time, but I'm thinking it's over now, genuinely. Um, you know, that's the last thing we see is Denjiro's real appearance as, I mean, Kyoshiro's real identity as Denjiro. So when we cut back to the present, then we find out what Kyoshiro did and the, the rebellion is still happening and everything like that. I think that would fit seamlessly as a transition. Like this was Denjiro the whole time and then Denjiro helped, helped you guys out at the last minute. So yeah. Um, let me know what you guys think below about this whole Kyoshiro Denjiro mess and what his plan's gonna be, how he's gonna get in contact with the Rebellion, and what his part is going to be in this whole thing. Um, yeah, let me know about that. Techie101, signing out. Later, everybody.